My mama whistle. She got a silver whistle to call us six kids in for dinner because she used to stand on the front porch and go, Purrrt! and they go, that's your mom. It's like, I am. <laughs> so, so they go, <laughs> they bought her a silver whistle. That was better at least. Well, we are enjoying looking at all the facets of our God Almighty, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, our Healer, our Savior, our Deliverer, our Redeemer. He's just, there's nothing that you need that he isn't the answer for and that he doesn't have a name for. And uh, believe it or not, after all these years, I discovered a new name. Yeah, as I was preparing for this Christmas message, and that name is Al Gabor. Have you ever heard of Al Gabor before? Al Gabor is the Almighty One, the Almighty One, the Almighty Arm of God, the Almighty Power of God, in whom there is nothing too hard. And I want to show you uh, this morning. We're going to look at many different passages to to get convinced and get deeply grounded in the fact that God is Almighty. You might be going through some struggles and you might have been praying for something for years and years, uh, but deep down you're, there might be a, a, a doubt or how come a question, why isn't God coming through on this? And um, I believe Mary had a revelation about Al Gabor, about her almighty God. And uh, we read about her story, her song, um, in Luke. In Luke chapter 1. Oh, is it 1? Yes, it's Luke chapter 1. And she gets this revelation of the almighty Al Gabor. But I was thinking, you know, um, how to relate, because I thought many guys, many people here who are listening to this message today, you're not maybe relating to a young virgin girl who lands up being impregnated by the Holy Spirit. And I know how important it is for you to connect, how important it is for you to say, you can see yourself in this message. Who is Al Gabor to you? It's one thing to say somebody else in God's word had a revelation of God as uh, the all-powerful, almighty one, but what about your circumstances? And um, bear with me for a second. I'm just going to I don't have a lot of costumes at my house because we really clean up a lot. But I just, I'm going to do the best I can to look like a superhero today. So here we go. So I've got my little mask here. And I have my little sword here. How, how is this? Do I look like a superhero? <laughs> so I want to show you that, uh, so that's enough of that. So I just wanted to... So get a little laugh, get you, get you warmed up a little bit. But I want to share with you guys uh, that on the inside of you, that's the long and the short of it, is the on the inside of you is a mighty warrior. That Al Gabor, the Almighty One, the one who says nothing shall be impossible for God is on the inside of you. And so every single person here is a superhero. Amen. And Jesus was a superhero. And one thing about superheroes, they all usually come with a disguise, right? They usually come, there's some kind of a disguise. I think uh, my son John, I always call him Superman, because he's got that look, you know, the, the dark glasses, and he comes dressed in a suit and everything. And then he doesn't totally change. He changes his clothes, and it's just like, I go, there goes Superman. Uh, because Superman goes into his little phone booth, and then he comes out with his disguise, and he's ready to save the world. And you know, maybe we can't relate. We have a trouble relating to who Jesus is because we think, well, that's different because he's God. Uh, but, but it's hard to kind of relate sometimes. But as I was meditating on this, I thought, every single superhero starts out as a baby. Now, in, in every single one of your minds, think of that one baby picture you have of yourself. And on the inside, doesn't look like a superhero, does it? Uh, but in the, Jesus disguised himself, it comes in the disguise of 
a baby. And so we see God's almighty power. First of all, we see God's almighty power in conception. We see God's power. It says the Holy Spirit, the angel answered and said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you in power. There's the Al Gabor at work. He comes upon her in such power that she becomes supernaturally impregnated. That sounds like a super story, doesn't it? It's just like, it's a miracle. That's what the word of God says. And it says to her, even Elizabeth, your cousin, who was said to be barren, and that's an important thing is no matter what the world says about you or about your circumstances, it's not what God says. Because it says, it says, it was said of her that she was barren, but, incredible change of circumstances, but she's already in her sixth month, for nothing shall be impossible with God. There we see the almighty power, and we need to have our faith built. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word. Amen. So what God wants you to get today is that nothing is too hard with God. With God, nothing is impossible. And so there's probably uh, things that come to your mind where you think, this is, unless God does something incredible and something miraculous, uh, we don't hope for a change. There's no change that the world says. It is said of our circumstances, this is the way it is. But God says, but, amen. amen, and shows the other side. For he wants every single one of us to know that nothing shall be impossible for him. So we see God's power, first of all, in the conception of Jesus. And then we see God's uh, incredible power in his condescension. He becomes like a baby. Amen. He, he comes to earth not as a superhero. Uh, uh, Ta-da! And the whole world to see him. He comes in a disguise of a baby. And why does he do that? Because every single one of us was a baby. And every single one of us came into the world in the same way. Amen. And then he was born in a stable, in a stinky, smelly stable with cows and sheep and everything else. So that when you think of the humble circumstances that maybe you came into the earth or a less than perfect environment, you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. God wants you to know that it doesn't matter what your background is. It's no excuse for you not to rise up and be a superhero. Amen. God wants you to know, and it's in his word. Amen. So we see his power come at conception. Then we see his power in condescension. Then we see his power in the culmination of geography and events and prophecies and such in a powerful way. We see a culmination and a coming together, the star shining in the sky and uh, the Lord appearing to the shepherds and the shepherds taking the good news of that to tell everybody around that a child has been born. We see a culmination of events that, that uh, and a control over circumstances. You know, God has control over your circumstances. And we'll see later. We need to ask him, and sometimes there's a pressing in, but he is the great Al Gabor who has power to change circumstances. Amen? And he has power to change even the hearts of kings. He says he changes as easy as a water course. And so we see that in chapter 2 of Luke, in, it says in verse uh, 1, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken. Okay, Caesar Augustus was a pagan ruler. He was a politician, and there was nothing holy about him. As a matter of fact, he declared himself to be God. He declared himself, there's an inscription, historically, this is, I'm just saying, because I did my research, so I'm taking it for granted that what they say is true, but on his grave, on his tomb, it was written, Savior of the world. He set himself up as the Savior of the world, and meanwhile, God uh, gets the last laugh. God sits in the heavens and laughs because he gets this bright idea to have a census so that he can tax the world, his known world. And it just so happens that Mary and Joseph have to go 
to Bethlehem because they are both of the tribe of David. And that was a that was a stipulation prophetically. In order to be a ruler, you had to be of the line of David. And so God's earthly father, Joseph, and Mary, his mother, uh, you see this divine orchestration of circumstances and events in God's almighty hand in changing circumstances, times, events, and even the minds of a pagan king who thinks it's his bright idea. And so we need to get rooted and grounded because when you come to God in prayer, you got to come to God with faith. Amen? With faith, without faith, it's impossible to change. Now maybe you know somebody and maybe even in our politicians, maybe you're looking at, at you know, the elections coming up in the states and you're scratching your head and you're going, oh no. We need to have that confidence that no matter what happens, God is almighty. And as he said to Pilate, you would have no power over me if it was not given to you from on high. Amen. Psalm says, why do the nations rage and plot in vain against God's and his anointed? But God sits in the heavens and he laughs. Because guess what? God gets the last laugh because he is all powerful. He is over all powerful over circumstances, over history, over fulfilling prophecy. When he says, oh you a Bethlehem in Micah, Micah uh, chapter 5 verse 2. But you Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small all among clans of Judah, out of you will come from me, one who will be a ruler over Israel, whose origins are of, are of old from all of eternity. Now, I don't know, it doesn't say that in all the translations, uh, but in the footnote it says, or from eternity. So God is saying Jesus was from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Out of, hit, out of Bethlehem would come a ruler. And so God orchestrates these circumstances and events so that they're in the exact place at the right time. And just when they happen to go to Bethlehem at the very hour, at the very time a census was taken, when Mary happened to be in her ninth month and was about to bring forth her child. Again, another perfect timing of God. God is, his timing is perfect. Perfect. Amen. He's never too late. He's never too early and he's never too late. He's Lord Al Gabor over time, over circumstances, over even our politicians who might give no credit whatsoever to Almighty God. He is Al Gabor. He is Lord. He shows his power in the conception of Jesus. He shows his power in the condescension of Almighty God to becoming like a baby. He gets down to our level. Amen. He gets down. When you're facing circumstances and you're tired, or whatever circumstance, whatever temptation, whatever you might ever be feeling, it said Jesus, he, he went through every single temptation, even like us, except without sin. So that we can relate. So that we can't say, well, that was Jesus. He was born in a palace, and he had a silver spoon in his mouth, and he was the, uh, of the line and lineage of David, so of kings. He came from that lineage. But what about me? I was born in an obscure town, a little town, farming town of Ontario. What about me? And God wants to say, he wants to take every single excuse and say, I can relate. I've been there and worse. Amen? So that we don't have any excuse there is. He condescends down to our level. He becomes like us. Going through what we go through. Feeling tired like we feel tired. Feeling, seeing and, and going through challenges within relationships like we do. So then we see, uh, yeah, his control over all these things. Then God shows his almighty power. In, in that God himself acknowledges Jesus as the Al Gabor. Not only is God almighty Al Gabor, an all-powerful God, uh, but he is confirmed as Jesus himself as the almighty God. And then this is the good part. This is where it really gets good because he tells us that that same fullness of the Almighty God, 
believe it or not. And unless you see it, you might think, well, that's kind of sacrilegious because religion won't tell you this. Wants you to think, oh, what a worm am I? You are just this lonely little worm. Why would God even bother looking at us or care about our circumstances? But in Colossians, Colossians 1.15 says, Of Jesus, so this is confirmed by God himself and in the word. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He's before all things and in him all things hold together. This is speaking of Jesus. So for us to know and believe and have our faith built up in God Almighty, who he is he, his name is Al Gabor, the Almighty One. We need to know that when Jesus, the image, he's the, in, he's the image of the invisible God. Now we see in the next chapter, chapter 2, verse 9, it says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given, here it comes, you, say I, I, I have been given, I have been given the fullness in Christ. Amen? Who is the head over every power and authority. So God is saying by his spirit, you have that same power. Jesus is the, the, the image, the exact representation of God, Al Gabor. And now when you look into the mirror of his word, he wants you to see that in you, all the fullness of God dwells in you. Not just in Jesus in bodily form, but in you. And see, the devil doesn't want you to know that. Amen. He doesn't want it, you to know that when you stand before Almighty God and you start declaring and you start warring and you start praying, that the very things, when you start praying his word, even as Jesus would pray the will and the word of Almighty God, when he dealt with the enemy, he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Amen? And that's why we have a sword. So when we stand with our armor on, as a mighty warrior. And we say it is written. Amen. All of hell has to bow. Yes. We have been given. We have to be able to say. In me is the fullness of God. The fullness of God is in me. We're not just, you know, our name is Christian. That means little Christ. But this word says the fullness of God. Not only does it dwell in Jesus in bodily form as the deity, but in us, all the fullness of God dwells. Amen. Who is the head over all power and authority? Amen. So when we say to the enemy, Jesus has given all power and all authority has been given into him. And I'm coming to hit, I'm coming, facing this situation in his name. Declaring the word of the Lord. Even as we read in the previous chapter, he is the firstborn of all creation. He created it and he sustains all things by his mighty power. So everything, we see that power at work in his conception, in the fact that he condescended and became one like us. And in all of creation, as powerful over circumstances, as power, he can change and control the hearts of all kings. Amen. This is the power of Almighty God. And God wants us to know this morning that we have that power. Amen. On the inside of us, unhindered, unfettered. When we know it, when we believe it will come in a greater authority. See, the, the, the thing is, um, in the spirit realm, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but, you know, if you're f afraid on the inside and you're doing deliverance and you're casting out a demon, for example, someone's got something, you're coming against an evil power, a principality or whatever. If you don't know who you are and the fullness of that Christ that dwells in you, the enemy knows it. 
the enemy knows it. As a matter of fact, I don't know how this works, but once God gives you a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge about a situation, it might have had you scratching your head and you're going, something's funny about this. I don't understand this circumstance here or this person. I don't understand what's going on here. There might be a lot of static and noise, but once you get a word from God on it, you might not even say anything, but you walk into a room, and if that person has a demon, they'll know that you know. Before you didn't know, and, and that, they were all happy with that, as long as it was static and you didn't know. But the instant you know what's going on, they'll know that you know. And all of a sudden, the hackles will get up, or you see people doing funny things while they just leave because they, they don't want to deal with whatever's going on. So in the same way, demons will not bow their knee. They'll not bow their knee if you come with doubt in your heart. If you don't know who you are in Christ, they won't bow their knee. But when you know they have to obey you, that what you say, and when you come with the sword of the Spirit, they will bow the knee and circumstance have to change. The devil has to loose that captive in Jesus' name. Now, God, they might still be dealing with their will. That doesn't, you know, God doesn't violate their will. Uh, but just to let you know how important it is that you know who you are, that all the fullness of God dwells in you so that you can know that you're a superhero. Amen? So that you can know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Jesus knew who he was. Though he condescended and became like a man, was born in a humble stable, the whole thing, he knew who he was. And so the next I want to, not only did God confirm it, through his word, uh, through creation, through all these other circumstances we looked at earlier. But Jesus boldly stated in so many times that he, he said, I am the great I am. He would stand up and boldly declare. That's why the Pharisees were so angry at him. Because they knew that he knew that he, who he was. And they were threatened because it. John 6.35 says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate of the sheep. I am the great, great shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the truth. I am the true vine. So Jesus said, I am the great I am. I am the great Al Gabor, I am that one. He claimed to be God. So either he had to be a lunatic, or where did he get this? He's just deluded, or liar, or he truly was the Lord of Lords, and he proved it. He proved it. Uh, we see it in his, all the miracles he performed. So he would say to people, if you can't believe me for who I say that I am, believe because of the miracles in themselves. And he proved that he had power over nature. As he stood up and he said, peace be still, he spoke to nature and the, st and the ca storm calmed. Amen. And he did this fully man. He didn't do use this using his Godhead. He could have changed the, the, the stones into bread. He could have, he said, called the legions of angels and had them take care of those who are coming against him at the cross. And yet he chose not to. Amen. Because he stayed in that realm of being a hundred percent man so that you and I could know that when he came on the inside of us and we could become born again, born by the spirit, the fullness of God would dwell in us. Amen. So that we, he wants you to know that the same power and authority is given to him, to you. He said, all power and authority has been given to me. I'm going to the Father, and it's a good thing I'm going to the Father because I'm going to leave you with another comforter. He is a great Al Gabor, and unless I go, you can't be filled with the fullness of the Godhead. Amen? And so Jesus showed he had the power over nature. He showed he, as Al Gabor, he had power over sicknesses and disease. It said they brought the multitudes to them, and he healed them all. He had power over the spiritual world when he healed the demonics, those who were oppressed of the devil, and with a word those demons came out. He shows that he has power over our salvation. To as many as received him, he gave what? Power, power to become sons and daughters of God. 
There is a power on the inside of you that we have to realize. That's why Paul says, I pray the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened so that you could see the hope of your calling, the glorious riches of your inheritance, and the power that is within you. Amen? Uh, so he showed he has power. He has power in you. And then he says, go and do. These signs will follow you. You'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So what happens, people, is a lot of times we pray something once and we pray it again and sometimes we pray for something for uh, months and we say, God, I don't see any change. I don't see this changing or that changing. But it will. He says, don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't grow weary as a warrior knowing the battle is the Lord's. Amen? And he shows his power as a mighty warrior all over the word and we just are restricted by time to look at a few a few scriptures but in Zephaniah 3 uh, 12 it says the Lord your God is with you he is a mighty to save he will take great delight in you and quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing he is mighty to save amen he's a mighty warrior and in Psalms we'll go to Psalms Psalms uh, 27 to start. I love this scripture. We pray this. You know, the new movie out is out of the war room. And um, I haven't seen it yet. I'm really looking forward to see it. But I'm thinking, man, we have a prayer warrior mentality in this church that I'm very grateful for. And this particular scripture we pray a lot. Lift up the gates. Lift up your heads, O oh you gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord Almighty. He is the mighty in battle. Amen? Are you aware that there's a battle going on? There's a battle for souls that you have to battle? And so don't be weary when you're battling things, thinking, well, I prayed and it didn't happen. There's a warfare going on. Amen? And if the enemy knows that he can get you to stop, he's going to get you discouraged. He's going to get you distracted. He's going to try every which way to get you to stop believing who you are. But when you know that you know that you know who you are, some things take a while. Amen? It didn't look like Jesus was very successful in his ministry, does it? That he had that many people trying to push him over the brow and coming against him. They were filled with jealousy and plotted in vain. Yes, they plotted in vain. Then when he hung on the cross, save yourself, they ridiculed him. And yet he's confident because he's a mighty warrior and he will not stop and vengeance is his and he gets the last word in the end. Amen? But we have have to engage in this battle and invite the Holy Spirit. Amen? We have to invite him into the situation. Who is he? He's a king of glory. Lift up those gates that the king of glory may come in. Why? Why do we worship like we did this morning? Because when the king of glory comes on the scene, everything that's demonic has to flee. Amen? That's what we're doing when we lift up the gates for the king of glory. We say, come on in. You are welcome here. Who is the king of glory? He is the Lord Al Gabor, the almighty one. Amen. He that he might come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord almighty. He is the king of glory. Hallelujah. So when we really want to see the enemy take flight, we worship him. We lift up the name of Jesus as we do this morning and every Sunday. Because when Jesus is high and lifted up, he said he'll draw all men to himself. Let God arise, and when we lift him up, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. And we speak that, and we speak that, and we speak that, and the enemy retreats and retreats and retreats, amen. When you know that you know that you know what your purpose is, what you've been called to do, you got a word of God on it, you've got that sword, and many of us have laid down that sword, don't know the word of God, and is it any wonder we're not seeing the power of God? God, is it any wonder we're not seeing the souls being brought in because we don't believe it because we don't see it the first time and we give up Amen. but we can render his plans null and void and powerless Amen, Amen. 
and put him under our feet. Here the Lord said, I will soon crush Satan under your feet. He's already done everything that he's going to do in crushing the enemy. Now he says, now you go out and you use that sword and pick up that sword. Many of us have laid it down. We get tired. And we forget that the word of God in that sword, every single superhero that I've ever seen, they've got a weapon. Amen. And we don't want to lay down our weapon. If you've laid down your weapon and you've lost faith in the word of God, I encourage you today to pick it up. Amen. Pick up that word. Amen. See his almighty power in his second coming as well. We're going to close with this scripture in Revelations. Revelations 19, verse 11. I saw in heaven. I want you to see this in your, in your mind's eye. Amen. Because it's a very real place. And I don't know. If you don't know that you can go there. Um, I want, I've got news for you. You can go there. Because God has given you a canvas in your spirit. Your spirit has been made alive in Jesus. I remember when uh, I first heard this. I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to say, okay, Jesus, you take me there. And um, I began to see, as John the Revelator, that there is a real, very real place. And God can open up our eyes to see, even as John the Revelator saw beyond the veil. veil. And, and since then, he's shown me different things about my dad who's gone before, who's already in heaven, my Oma, who's already there. I got to see that all of us friends went to heaven to visit. There are halls of fame where every single person on the earth who has ever done anything that we might not even think is very significant, they are rewarded in heaven. One of the plaques I, found, I saw my dad seven places in this hall of fame, and one was when he came over over on the ship from Holland. And I'm just going, well, that's a funny thing. But if we're led by the Spirit, we're going where God has assigned us to go, we will be rewarded. When we stay on track, when we follow his plan, amen, then we can be confident that a mighty Al Gabor is going before us, making a way where there seems to be no way. You cannot fail when you have the almighty Al Gabor on your side and Jesus, the Al Gabor, he, who he claimed he was, working for you, ever living to make an intercession for you. And when you're in that perfect center will of God, when you speak the word of God, when you speak his word, what's his word for the specific situation you are going for? God, give me a word. I was waiting on the Lord, because uh, this is a very important part of it, that we're not just spouting off, well, I prayed this scripture for years and, and nothing's happened. Is that the scripture God gave you to fight with? Because it's very important to take the sword, which has to be sharp. When God gives you a word, and that's the word. I got two scriptures for Scott last night. I'm going to go to war with it. Amen? I'm going to war with those two scriptures. So it's very important to get a word for God so that we can see victory. Amen? The word says he always causes us to triumph. So how about coming to the enemy with that one? devil, I tell him all the time, I'm not going away. I'm going to keep this sword and this is not going to fail. This cannot fail. The word of God cannot fail. He says not one single word would return to him void. But it would accomplish everything he sent it forth to do. Amen. Everything. And when we know that it cannot fail, we get an attitude. And God wants you to have an attitude this morning. Amen. Amen. He doesn't want you hanging your head in defeat and thinking it's over and this is the way it's going to be from now on. No, it's not. It's up to you. God is saying it's up to you. What are you going to do with that sword? What about you, almighty man of valor, to rise up and be all that God wants you to be? Because he's going to come back as a victorious king. This one who was came, disguised, condescended into the tiny, teeny baby is going to come back riding. Amen. And, and I'm just going to read this wonderful scripture, verse 11 of chapter 19 of Revelations. I saw heaven standing open. Let's see it there this morning. It's there. It's very real. And before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. 
With justice he judge, judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. His name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, that's us, amen, and those who have gone before him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He who treads the winepress of his fury of the wrath of God Almighty as Al Gabor and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This tiny baby inside of that is a superhero. Is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And on that fuzzy little head with a bit of fluffy ducky hair has many crowns. And in his fingers where he once held the hand of his mama, he now has a sword and he has a scepter. The scepter, he will rule the nations. And his word is, his name is the word of God. Hallelujah. He once was dressed in swaddling clothes and he will be dressed in fine linen even as you are. And on him, he has a sash. And he has a name that you don't know, and it's a new name, but you can ask him, because I did. You can ask him, what's my name for all of eternity? See, God longs to show you. He wants you. He's not trying to conceal or keep promises from you. He wants you to know. As well, I asked the Lord, show me, God, who you see me to be. And guess what I saw? I saw a warrior on a horse with a sword charging into battle. Hallelujah. I, I'll never forget the image that I saw. See, God wants me to know who I am so that we can do great harm to the enemy. The word, you know, the, the people were, were marveled when they saw Jesus and his disciples walking and coming. Demons were fleeing and screaming. Oh no, here he comes because they knew who was coming even though many people missed it. But he wants you to know who you are. And you know, the world has these things about superheroes and everything, but God wants us to know you are a superhero. Why are people attracted to that? It's because on, deep down on the inside of them, they want to make a difference. They want to see justice be done. They want to see equality. They want to see what's God's divine order. See, God's presence will come. I want you to get this. I just uh, read this about, uh, about in the last week or so. It's new to me, but I ju I'm, I'm just meditating on it. It's blessing me. God's presence, his Shekinah glory, he is the king of glory. He comes when three things are in line. Number one, people are walking in love. That's why I'm so proud of this body, because we've got it, amen. People that walk in love is conducive to the power of God, the Shekinah glory. People that walk in unity, they are one heart and one mind because it's not about what they think or they want, but they're saying, not my will, not their will, but God, your will be done on the earth in reality. Let it, let it come to pass. Let it be to us according to a word, a, your word, even as Mary said. And then the third thing is where there's divine order. Is your home in divine order? Are you prioritizing because he said, if we seek first his kingdom and his righteous priorities, then all these other things that are in heaven that is meant to be yours, sh they shall be yours as well. So these three things, if you want to see Al Gabor go to bat for you, amen. If you want that to know who you are, walk in love, walk in unity, and walk in divine order. Ask the Lord, is my home in, running in divine order? What's out of divine order? 
but it's just a wonderful way to be the way it's just like I love this day this day is just so the way it's meant to be it just has such a it's just so easy where the oil of the Holy Spirit is and we want to see Al Gabor amen the mighty warrior the king of glory come into our homes come into our midst and then we shall see the power amen we'll start to see and know that it is his will that when we begin to call people out of darkness those who walk in darkness those who sit in darkness they will see a great light and those who are bound by the enemy when we say be loose be freed even as Jesus did with confidence they were set free with a word he healed them amen so let's rise to our feet, O mighty man of valor, O mighty warriors, O superheroes, you who are, you're going to have the reputation as the disciples did. They turned the world upside down. Do you believe we can? Amen. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, my goal for years has been to see one-tenth of Thames Center come into this house of the Lord. And guess what? That would, be, that would fill our, our sanctuary. That's just a start. That's really not that great. One tenth? Like, you know, what would that be if you got one tenth out of a percentage out of a hundred? Uh, you wouldn't be very happy. Amen? But it's a start. Because deep down, every one of us has to say, what can you believe God for this morning? What situation have you been looking at that you think, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to face. If God could change Caesar Augustus and put in his heart to give him the great idea to hold a census when apparently just a little bit of historical background, a census wasn't due yet. But he needed to get some more taxes, so whatever he said happened. And so he called that. If God could control his heart and his mind, let's just come in agreement this morning that the impossible is going to happen Amen. this year. And is it too hard for God to do that even before the close of 2015? Amen. Amen. Remember we preached on the year of 2015 this year and God confirmed with the blood moon all the prophetic promises, Amen. a culmination of events and promises and prophecies that were to come to pass. Amen. Can we believe? Let's just stretch our faith this morning. Father, we come to you before your throne of grace, and we're so grateful, and we're so humbled, and we stand in awe that you would choose to have all the fullness dwell in us. The fullness of Christ to dwell in us. Lord, it's one thing to think that Jesus was filled with the fullness of the deity bodily. But Lord, for us to believe, we're asking help our unbelief. Help our unbelief this morning. Father, we're going to target this morning, Father. We're not going to just be hearers of the word only. We're going to be doers of the word. So we're going to take your sword right now, Father, and we're going to say those impossible situations, that person, that circumstance, the events, the history, the whatever, whatever needs to move around, we declare that we believe that you are all powerful to control and alter circumstances. Lord, you who could cause a miraculous conception and even that it was said of Elizabeth she is barren that's not what you said it is said of her but Lord for nothing will be impossible with God and so father we say to you with faith we believe Amen. Say it this morning. We believe, we believe that this circumstance, this circumstance that I'm lifting up to your throne of grace you, is, not too difficult, is not too difficult, is not impossible, not impossible but it is, possible. it is possible. We come in agreement, we come in agreement with, one with one another's prayers. Let it beat us. According to your word, according to your word, and your plan and your will, and your plan and your for your glory and honor, and your glory and your we honor. lift up the gates, we lift up the gates, and we say, King of Glory, come on in, come in, O King of Glory, you are the Lord, you are the Lord. Strong, and oh, are the Lord. strong and mighty, mighty in battle, mighty in battle, in Jesus name. Jesus. We receive it, Father. We receive it. Amen and amen. amen. Give me glory and honor. Hallelujah. Give him praise.
praise this morning in the house of the Lord.